you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. Hey, we're doing some quick podcasts here for Collision Conference 2022. If you're watching these years from now, we're going to be covering some of the different booths that are at the Collision Conference. And so this will be pretty exciting. If you're there, you'll know some of the places you want to take a look at. Today, we have Kiwi TCMS's Alex Todora, he is the CEO and project lead of, of Kiwi TCMS. Welcome to the show, Alex. How are you? There you go. And give me a little tired there. Give me as much audio as you can, though, because we've got a lot of background noise, if you would. Oh, you, can, okay. almost, you can probably yell at me if you want. And what's the what's the .com or .org that is for your website? It's, it's .org. It's Okay, it's so it's Kiwi K I W I T C M S dot org. Yes, correct. There you go. And you're you're wanting to give me as much audio as you can when it comes to loudness. Just project oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what what? Give us an overview of your company and what you guys do. Yeah, so what so what we do is you know, I'll take a step back. So we are at Collision Conf and there are hundreds of startups who are building products or applications, mobile web, blockchain, etc. And all of these are in nature when are technical products. So it comes a point in time where all these startups they do need to actually custom verify that the products work as they are supposed to before the product goes out to customers. And so what KVT CMS is, it is a specialized software, which is meant to be used by other test engineers, where mm -hmm. these test engineers, they can document the way that they work. They can document their work. Oh, they can document the results of their actions every day on every build of the product that they're testing. And mm -hmm. then the test engineer can, can go up to their boss or product author and say, listen, you know, that's what we've done. We feel confident about the product. We've covered a lot of scenarios. We've covered two a lot of environments or a lot of devices where our product is supposed to, there is some quality built in, into the product and it is safe to release to customers. And it's a leading open source test management system for manual and automated testing. Is, oh, what, what created the need for this in your guys' mind as to why this needed to come to market? Yeah, uh, well, it's a very interesting story. So the uh, say open source, it started as what you would call a project long, long time ago, and it was actually started by a very big open source vendor way, way back before 2009. We aren't sure, you know, of the original story, why it came to be. Well, it's, it's, it's this distinct. Later down the line, the actual source code of the product was uh, released on the internet. It was open for everybody to check, to modify and to build up on it. And I do have a career in quality engineering for very many years. And there was a time where I worked for a customer. We did need a similar system for that particular customer. I knew that it existed. So I just, uh, I just took it down from the internet, deployed it at the customer and just did the job. Uh -huh. Then very quickly after that, we realized there's quite a lot of problems within the previous uh, software that existed. And mm -hmm. so because it's open source, everybody's free to modify it. I started to do it exactly that. Uh, modifying, uh, changing the software, making it better. And over time, it went through several different transformations until it became the DCMS. Um, and then uh, I decided, well, it's been a fully open source project until now, but you know, it's not fun doing it alone. So yeah. let me build a team and let me build a community around this and see if it takes hold. And lo and behold, it actually did. And so much so that we are almost to the 2 million uh, milestone, 2 million downloads milestone, maybe in, yeah. in a couple of months. That's awesome. So we took off, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it took off from there. We did continue a few more years just working as a open source team and we did see a lot of traction. So we decided let's, you know, let, let's see what will happen if we start offering subscription services, just put a button on the website where people can actually pay money and people started actually paying money and 
requesting services. So that's how we started. Then we came to a point where we realized that we need to to transform and take it from being an open source project to actually being a startup company and do business. Mm-hmm. So and and here are we today. There you go. Doing business is always good. So anything special you're uh, showing at a uh, collision conference or just pretty much promoting the company? Yeah, we are promoting the company and it's, you know, it, it's our first time here. So the focus is on talking to as many startups as we can just you know, gather to spread the word out there to showcase the product. We did have a couple of uh, successful connections already today because everybody needs testing. So we, we say in the industry, we say if it's not in the DCMS system, then you don't test it. If it's not documented, it doesn't exist because you need your ultimate source of look. There's a ultimate source of truth, which is gave it to CMS. Yeah. So showcasing the product, uh, talking to other technical people, because uh, we speak the same language, we can relate very quickly. Uh, talking to potential partners, you know, see what we can do together. There's a lot of promising leads. We do need to put a lot of uh, effort to actually turn this into reality. Uh, but it's, you know, this is up to us, of course. And the interesting thing, you know, thing for uh, kind of for the uh, attendees, maybe, uh, that we bring yeah. um, is what we call hardware black boxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in the in the world of uh, software testing, we have this concept of black box testing versus white box testing. Mm-hmm. So black box is when you have a product and you don't know how it works exactly. You don't know the internals. You feed input, like clicking, clicking with the mouse on a button or changing mm-hmm screens in the application and then you have output which is you observe what's happening in the product and you try to figure out well is this the correct thing that i should be observing mm-hmm. that's what we call black box testing so we took this idea we partnered up with a hacker in Serbia, so they did their own original research on top of that idea and we came up with hardware devices which are built on top of arduino uh-huh. and they are of course black in color so they are small that big boxes where you have buttons you have leds you have switches and knobs and you can try to figure out how exactly do they work some of the buttons for example are seem important but they don't actually do anything oh, wow. and this is up for the person just playing around with those boxes to try to figure out and not only that but these are actually devices which are meant to showcase a certain bias uh, in the human brain so all of them have different psychological research behind us there is some uh-huh. sort of theory and those biases, when you are a technical person, when you are an engineer, they are actually bad for you uh, because they prevent you to do your job uh, well, or, you know, you look only one-sidedly uh, at your job. Mm-hmm. And we are, we are supposed to be uh, very skilled at our jobs and we are supposed to recognize those biases and try to get away from them. Uh-huh. So, that's, so that's why we have this. And of course they are open source black boxes. We have the full designs and everything for them. Uh, it's on the internet. Everybody can just uh, download. Uh, the information built their own boxes, 3D print the cases. That's awesome, man. And it sounds like this really helps developers out with everything they're doing. And you offer, it looks like a lot of different solutions here. You've got a, you've got an enterprise a subscription, private tenant subscription, and just self-support, a managed hosting as well. Yeah, yeah, we do have several different layers of subscription or what we could offer to customers mm-hmm. because the there is very big difference between the size of teams and the kind of the type of organization that may, uh, may use Kiwi CMS. A lot of them are relatively small. They don't have the time and a lot of cases, they don't even have the resources and the knowledge to actually deploy the system and host it themselves. So for them, it's easy to consume something that's provided software as a service, point and click, and it's ready, ready to go. And on the other spectrum, you have the big enterprises who need extra features who are like, they have a thousand engineers using the system, they need access control. They operate in much more, you know, strictly confined environments. So they have all sorts of requirements you know, around you. So we need to, uh, to be able to service those as well. Well, this is pretty interesting. Anything more we need to touch on before we go out? We got it all in the can. Uh, well, uh, we, we can talk a little bit about community. Uh, sure. so that, that's our biggest strength. Uh, mm-hmm. So like I say, you know, we start with one. We've had contributions from pretty much everywhere in the world. The ones kind of which are most valuable to me. We've got contributions from Nigeria, Kenya, and Africa. Wow. Uh, and we didn't even think, you know, we didn't even know that there could be high on um, IT market or demand for systems like ours. We've seen contributors from Nepal. <laughs> Uh, which you, you would think, you know, Nepal is a smartest country. What, what, an, what is an ID system doing being used in Nepal? Mm-hmm. But it's also a very big company. 
a very big country, they look like a very big e-commerce market locally. We've seen fun conditions in countries like Italy, Georgia, the US. Wow. The, we do invest heavily into a community outreach. We did have uh, uh, mentorship programs for community. We did work with students in the past. as well has been an awesome experience. Starting with somebody who's not very experienced in the IT industry and just driving them through their contributions, helping learn, mentor them in order to boost their own careers. And so we've done a lot of things, you know, on the community side. That's pretty awesome. I mean, community is really important. And, and if you're helping people learn, educate, and come up through the ranks and figure stuff out and make the world a better place, that's awesome, man. You know, the most awesome thing about community is you get to go to an event as somebody that you haven't seen before. It comes to me. I am, I am such and such person. I did this and this whole for your project board. You know, we exchange emails. We talk about this topic, and then you then you realize, oh, okay, yeah, I've gone to this person. That's awesome. Uh, and you get to meet these people. Like that is awesome, man. That is awesome. Well, it sounds awesome that you've built this thing. Anything more we want to touch on before we go? Oh, I think that. That's about it. There you go. Well, it sounds good. It's been wonderful to have you. Give us your website one more time so that people can find yeah. it on the interwebs. Yeah. Our website is kivtcms.org. So K-I-W-I-T-C-S dot org. There you go. And thank you very much for being on the show. We really appreciate it, man. Yep. Thank you for having me. There you go. And thanks, Amonitz, for tuning in. Be sure to check everyone out. If you're at the Collision Conference, go see by their booth. Do you know your booth number off the top of your head? Yeah, 83281. There you go. Or go to their website, check them out at kiwitcms.org. Thanks, Monitor, for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you guys next time.